It's easy to book a loss reserve estimate when you have a current actuarial report, but what loss reserve amount should be carried between reports? Hi everyone, this is Don Grimm. In this video, I'll share a common approach for calculating interim loss reserve estimates, that is, estimates that are needed for time periods between formal actuarial loss reserve evaluations. This topic is particularly relevant to organizations that self-insure some or all of their PNC exposure. Let's get started. In this example, let's assume we have an actuarial report for a self-insured program as of year-end 2022. This report provides loss reserve estimates as of 12-31-2022 equal to $1 million. This amount reflects the estimated liability of the self-insured program as of 12-31-2022. The report also provides a loss forecast equal to $400,000. This amount reflects the estimated loss associated with the upcoming policy year, which is 2023 in this example. Suppose a new actuarial report will not be available until year-end 2023, but we need an estimate of loss reserves as of 3-31-2023. How can these interim loss reserves be estimated? Loss reserves as of 3-31-2023 can be estimated by starting with the prior loss reserves, that is, loss reserves as of 12-31-2022 in our example. To this amount, we add 3 twelfths of the forecasted 2023 loss amount. The 3 twelfths is the pro rata factor reflecting the portion of the forecasted loss attributable to the period between 12-31-2022 and 331-2023, in other words, the first quarter of 2023. This amount reflects the reserve liability associated with the additional insured exposure in the first quarter of 2023. Next, we subtract losses paid in the first quarter of 2023. The subtraction of this amount reflects the fact that loss reserve liabilities are reduced as claims are paid. Combining these three components gives us an estimate of loss reserves as of 331-2023. Now let's go back and substitute some amounts. The loss reserve estimate as of 12-31-2022 is $1 million per the corresponding actuarial report. Next, the forecasted loss amount for the first quarter is 3 twelfths of 400,000 or 100,000. Finally, after reviewing the actual claim experience of the self-insured program in our example, we determine that losses paid in the first quarter equal $30,000. Using this information, we calculate a loss reserve estimate of $1.07 million. This amount reflects the estimate of loss reserves as of 331-2023 absent a full actuarial analysis. Later in this video, I'll explain the difference between an interim estimate such as this one and an actuarial loss reserve estimate. In the next slide, we'll review the same procedure using multiple interim evaluations throughout 2023. In this exhibit, we extend the previous example to include more interim evaluations. The first row summarizes the calculations we just discussed. Let's quickly review. In order to calculate an interim reserve estimate as of 331-2023, we begin with the actuarial loss reserve estimate as of 1231-2022 of $1 million. Note that the amounts in this exhibit are in thousands of dollars. To the $1 million, we add the pro rata portion of the forecast for the first quarter of 2023 of $100,000. Next, we subtract the actual losses paid in the same quarter which equal $30,000. This gives us the interim re loss reserve estimate of $1.07 million. The $1.07 million is now the starting point for our interim loss reserve estimate as of 6-30-2023. To this amount, we add the pro rata portion of the forecast for the second quarter of 2023, which is also $100,000. Next, we subtract the actual losses paid in the second quarter 
which happens to equal 80,000. This results in an interim loss reserve estimate of 1.09 million. We can continue with this procedure to estimate interim loss reserves for the remaining quarterly evaluations. Doing so, we estimate loss reserves of 1.04 million at 9-30-2023 and 1.05 million as of 12-31-2023. But this brings up a good question. Why do we need a new actuarial report as of 12-31-2023 if we already have a loss reserve estimate? It seems like we can continue calculating interim estimates indefinitely. What's the problem with that? Let's return to our original example and I'll explain the difference. In our original example, we started with a 12-31-2022 actuarial loss reserve estimate of $1 million and calculated the 3-31-2023 interim loss reserve estimate of $1.07 million. Instead of an interim estimate, suppose we prepared an actuarial estimate as of 3-31-2023. How would our estimate change? As part of an actuarial analysis as of 331-2023, estimates of loss for historical policy periods, that is 1231-2022 and prior, are reevaluated. The change in prior policy period estimates of ultimate loss directly affects the 331-2023 loss reserve estimate. Why would these change? Prior policy period estimates of ultimate loss change in an actuarial analysis primarily due to three reasons, changes in claim experience, changes in industry trends, or changes in actuarial modeling. In practice, this amount can be positive or negative. A positive amount indicates adverse development and a negative amount indicates favorable development. For the purposes of our example, assume this change equals negative $50,000. This amount represents the key difference between the interim estimate and the actuarial estimate. Don't be fooled into thinking that this is an easy amount to determine. It represents thousands of actuarial calculations consolidated into a single number. Okay, we're almost ready to calculate the actuarial reserve estimate as of 331-2023. Before doing so, let me bring your attention to one other amount that may change. As part of an actuarial analysis, the forecast amount for the 2023 year is reevaluated in consideration of the new information available since the prior analysis. Consequently, the quote unquote forecast period is now in the past and can be replaced with an estimate based on actual claim experience. In practice, since claims tend to emerge slowly, there is likely to be a significant reliance on the prior forecast amount. In this example, the actuarial reevaluation lowers this component from $100,000 to $95,000. When we combine the four components in our example, we calculate an actuarial loss reserve estimate of $1.015 million, which is $55,000 less than the corresponding interim estimate we calculated earlier. Keep in mind that this is just an example. Depending on the type and size of self-insured portfolio, interim estimates may be sufficiently accurate. In other instances, regular actuarial estimates may be necessary. It's a nuanced subject and I recommend you discuss your unique needs with your actuary. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or feel free to contact me directly. You can find me at archeractuarial.com. Thanks for watching.